of my grown. As soon as we walk up, we need some new tofu. Hump day morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's going to have a great day. This is going to be an ass ass day for me. I can just tell you right now, this is going to be ugly because I have to go on the Dan Salio show and do the walk of shame because the Cowboys lost and the damn Eagles found a way to win. So it's going to be ugly, but I'm going to be a grown ass man and show up like I'm supposed to. So we don't have much time to lick our wounds and we have to get our shit together real quick because tomorrow in New York, in the rain it is going to be raining it's going to be sloppy it's been crazy um it's been raining the last three days here and i have my high school class reunion <laughs> on friday where it's homecoming and there's a parade on friday and then there's the game friday night and they're talking about over an inch of rain so there's that and that rain of course is going to be in new york which means it's going to be harder to pass the football and you may need to run the football more. It will be very, very interesting how the Cowboys get back together on this game. But this is a must-win situation. You cannot lose to the New York Giants. Go to the basement of the NFC East and end up being 1-3. and three. Now, the Cowboys seemingly listening to Mike McCarthy's press conference yesterday. He doesn't seem like he's feeling any pressure. He seemed happy and nonchalant. Uh, Micah Parsons, of course, is pissing off, you know, Eagle players, C.J. Gardner-Johnson and things like that. And we had the kumbaya moment of C.D. Lamb saying, you know, apologizing and basically saying he's got to uh, grow up. Let's go to the tape on that one. I to be truthful to myself, and I played a part in that loss, a big part, honestly. And uh, nor did my body language, nor attitude approaching the situation help the situation or the outcome of the game. But um, I feel like uh, obviously giving them an extra opportunity or some leverage to gain momentum uh, in the red zone was big on us. Well, big on myself, obviously, and then us as a whole, as offense, we gotta we gotta score, capitalize on every opportunity that we get. And um, yeah, that, then we'll win again. When you talk about the body language, did you see yourself, or did someone say, "Hey, look, look at how you're"? No, I'm aware of what I, I'm aware of what I was doing for sure. How do you balance that out and still stay a passionate player that wants to win? Uh, obviously, just stay composed throughout the situation, no matter how I'm feeling. I mean, the feelings are going to be the feelings throughout the whole game, right? Uh, feelings go up and down, and we treat this mental. We have this mental conditioning every week. And uh, truly understanding and using that, my practice uh, habits, and actually those were one of the moments my fault, um, where it could have came into fruition. And obviously it went the opposite direction, and nor was it good for myself or the team. It's very detrimental, detrimental, excuse me. And, um, yeah, we'll, I'll make up for it. Last year, we, last year we talked about this after the San Francisco game, and you had maybe the best stretch of your career. How do you look back at that and maybe channel that into similar? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I plan on doing it again. After taking a couple days to reflect, how do you kind of balance being passionate but also having that detrimental side, like you said? Um, man, just being a professional. Being a professional about this whole situation, understanding it's a long game. But as for me and my performance, I expect a lot out of myself, uh, more than anyone could put on me. And um, quite honestly, I felt myself, and obviously I felt the team just as far as producing and being that game breaker player for the team and uh, obviously mm -hmm. the guy that they can lean on and um, yeah I, I kind of let it let the game get to my head a little bit but in the same sense I knew what I can do I knew what I bring to the table and I know what I can do on that field so uh, with that being said going forward 
there shall be different a difference. Is that what you were frustrated mostly with, just yourself, or was it just absolutely, you? absolutely myself, and then like my ability to contribute to the offense, knowing what I can do, you know. So um, yeah, that played a huge part. And once again, can't blame nobody. You got to start with the man in the mirror, and I'm a huge believer in that. And um, watching that game kind of pissed me off, but. Hey, I, I did that. You know what I'm saying? I can't get mad at nobody else. So uh, with that being said, I've learned. So you don't use the excuse of I wasn't here all summer. Ain't no excuse for that. that. We, we, should, we should know. We, we know better. I played football my whole life. Yeah. I know better. One what? thing we talked about, I think it was two weeks ago, about how you still reach out to certain people wanting to get their knowledge and get better at your game. One of those is Amari Cooper. This week you're going to be likely getting shadowed by Deontay Banks. Are you going to reach out to him because Cooper did have some success against Deontay Banks last weekend? Uh, no, I'm very familiar with him. Um, I mean, I've seen him twice already, and this is going on in the second year. Uh, just kind of going and reflecting on that, and then obviously watching out for Coop, seeing how he played Coop, um, where'd he win, where'd he lose, and uh, different leverages. And obviously you got to watch out for the safety. Um, so with that, just, just seeing how the, the preparation of the defense and how they kind of were maneuvering with Coop and a guy of his caliber. So, uh, yeah, it should be exciting. Given how things went on, on Sunday, just the totality of it, are you looking forward to a short week because you get to get right back onto the saddle and kind of rinse that out of your mind? Absolutely. Um, can't wait to be out there again. Can't wait to show my, show my abilities. Can't wait to put it on the line for my brothers. Um, it's a lot that I got built up right now. What are conversations Coach like? Coach acknowledged that you guys had some poor preparation last week in practice. Where does the preparation stand as far as today? I mean, we, we got to take it upon ourselves. The coaches are going to – they, they, they've they done their job of preparing us for the situation, and, and it's on us to execute. Um, obviously, the thing they can do is game plan for us, put us in position, line us up, tell us where to go, what gaps to fill, what routes to run to be physical, all these other things. But at the end of the day, when we get between those lines, it's on us. So um, again, that goes back to looking at the man in the mirror. And with that being said, I don't really look at no game plan as far as to dictate the game. Because at the end of the day, we got to go out there and make those plays. How much, you got it. That's true. At, how much do you and Dak look at this thing and say, we got to get this going? Because say that again? How much do you and Dak together look at this thing and say, we got to get this going? Man. No, we understand the urgency. Um, and that's between us. We talk about it every day, every night, and our relationship has, if anything, gotten stronger. Don't let what, what's out there fool you. Um, we're brothers to the end. We know that we all we got, and um, I tip my hat off to him. I got the utmost respect for him, and that's, I look at him as a brother. Uh, so that, with that being said, everything is going to come out. The, the energy, the passion, the love, the fight. We're going to make up in the end. No, no craziness now. Don't. That's what was on the sideline Sunday, is what you're saying? Yeah, no, nah, for sure. What does poor preparation mean when some of the guys around here talk about? Is it not enough film study? Is it not studying the tendencies of your opponent enough? A little bit of everything. Um, you can't really, it's hard to pinpoint out of what one person is not doing. You know what I'm saying? And um, with that, I feel like, I mean, we could do everything in the building, but then it comes to those preparations outside of the building. Like, what are you doing on your own? Like, are you doing everything to get your body ready mentally? Are you putting yourself in a position? Are you playing a game outside of the game? Um, physically, are you okay? Are you taking care of your body? Are you getting massages? There's a lot of ways, different ways and variations of preparing for the game and making sure that you're in your best shape to go perform at a high level. Do you feel like there's things the offense can do to help out the defense as they kind of work through? Yeah, go score points. Yeah. Go score points. And all my life I've been on high scoring offense, and we ain't stopping this shit. I can promise you that. Is tempo something that you guys are going to look to increase here? Because I can't give you the game plan. Can you just play, <laughs> I mean, if you just play the fourth quarter every quarter, you guys exactly. score 1,000 points. So exactly. Is there something to be said about maybe upping the tempo? Um, obviously, it's just uh, – there was some good in that game, just as well as there was bad. It was more bad than good, but obviously if you want to be, you know, optimistic about the situation in the fourth quarter, the end of the fourth quarter when our backs are against the wall and understanding that there is nowhere, no more backwards we can go. Uh, the only thing we can do is go forward, trusting on each other, believing in each other, and trusting that the, the guy next to you is going to handle his business and do his job, and that's how we came back. To Patrick's point, question, about, please. To Patrick's point about short week, so on Monday morning, were you hit at the crack of dawn, or did you get hit at normal time just to, to get to get going again? Would you erase what happened? Oh no, you can't. You can't really erase what happened because what already happened happened. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
And I actually look at that as motivation because I know that's not the player I am. I know that's not the team that I am. And I know that's not the guy I am. And with that being said, I look at that to build off of. And I don't necessarily look at that as a, as a downfall. Granted, it was a bad game on my end. I fully take accountability in that. I have, I have no shame in that, like, you know what I'm saying? So uh, with that being said, I will be better in the future, and it's going to be fine. Thanks, CD. Thank you. All right. Let's hope that this is the kumbaya moment that the Cowboys get to back together and get this thing on track. Um, that definitely was not a good look on Sunday with CD. Um, seeing him melt down and just lose it and them literally taking him out of the game. But that humbling experience may be the best thing that they did to let him know that this is unacceptable and it doesn't matter who you are, you must perform. So in a way, I think I'm actually very, very happy about the way that this has been handled so far. I know haters are going to come at me and just say, oh, blah, 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 but it's okay. Here's the thing. Here's the good thing. I always say, although now that we have a 17-game season, it ends up changing things, okay? But I used to always like to break a season down into quarters, four games, okay? And what you have to do is, in those four-game stretches, okay, you got to have at least two of them where you're 500, two and two, okay? If you have two of those, two and two, that's four wins. And Two of those other ones, you must be three and one. If you do that, then you've got 10 wins. And 10 wins should get you into the playoffs and an opportunity to um, challenge for a Super Bowl. So right now, we've got three games in. We're one and two. We need this one, and we're on track. You've got, of course, the 17th game, which could give you possibly an 11 game, you know, and a little extra cushion. But that's what we're looking at. We want to, by the first eight games, be no worse than four and four. And that's still a possibility. But we have to have ha all hands on deck, and we have to get ourselves together, and we have to hold ourselves accountable. The thing on the defense, you know, this feels like deja vu where last year we were saying, damn, we should have kept Kellen Moore for the first, you know, five games. And then lo and behold, the offense got themselves together where it looked like it was going to be atrocious. I'm going to give benefit to the doubt because Mike Zimmer's been around the block long enough that he should be able to um, get this together. A lot of the problems we have right now are people not knowing where they should be on the defense. That's part of the problem. And it takes time to understand as implementing a new system. We'll see where we go forward here, but we don't have much time to lick our wounds as the Cowboys will be headed to New York today. And I've got to go drop my truck off, but I, let's listen to the haters on ESPN before we get out of here. Believe in. Yeah, oh, you know, the Dallas Cowboys, they didn't do much in the offseason, but I, I didn't waver. I'm like, you know, this is a really good team with a really good quarterback, and they were going to contend for a Super Bowl. I no longer believe that because <laughs> in back-to-back -back weeks, this defense has proved that anybody could rush for five yards to carry. Behind the right offensive line, Greeny would add oh. five plus yards to carry <laughs> against this run-stop defense, so there's no way they could play in the Super Bowl playing. I'm insulted by that. Teams are averaging 7.7 .7 yards well, per play against Well, we got to have some level of realistic, <laughs> okay, right? Okay, so yesterday, as yeah, I just no mentioned, go, on Sports Center, uh, was the day we have been waiting for all of our lives. There was a poll taken in Dallas <laughs> that shows oh, that most Cowboy fans believe that Jerry Jones is the biggest issue with the franchise right now. So Jerry was asked about it, and here's what he said. That's very fair. How, how could you think otherwise? It's well known that no decision is ultimately made there for what I either have it acquiesced or approve it. Uh, that's the way it is. I'm not trying to say this, but if you look at who's uh, uh, won the games over the last four or five years, Kansas City has, of course, but we're not far right. We're right in that pack. So, so let's try and make it clear what we, what I think he's saying. I, I'm, I'm looking. At, uh, I mean, why are you making that face? Because he did a little. I thought he was taking accountability all morning when I was listening to this sound, and then I listened to it again, and I heard the part where he refused to fully take That's accountability. Right. 
my bad, very fair on me, period. Not, but we did win a lot of games. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, they have At won the a end, lot he games. compared himself to the Chiefs. They haven't won important yeah. games. Yeah. Let's make sure we can differentiate winning games and important games. When he threw that last little bit yeah. in, that was shady by I, Jerry. I, I used to apologize like that. <laughs> like I, yeah. I didn't, I'm sorry for how I acted, but what you said, <laughs> though. Yes. Like, man, stop it, Jerry. Just say my bad and move on. I'll do better. <laughs> Here's the thing. He's right. Part of him is absolutely right. The Cowboys have been a very good team for the last several years. Let's not go back and through 25 right. years of history right, right. or whatever it is. They've won 12 games in three consecutive seasons. He has led the horse to water. They haven't been able to drink. The question is, has that been Jerry Jones's fault or not? So your job as a general manager is to get your team from good mm-hmm. to great. So the yeah. pieces and parts that you know you're missing, and he's failed. you go – Put, in your, put, put on your football team. He hasn't done that. Mm. He continues to sign his same guys without the addition of free agents that he knows that can take them over the cusp. That's the problem. When you saw what happened to them against Green Bay and you saw them run right down the middle of the, between the tackles, go fix that problem because you know it's a copycat league. Next year, teams are going to do the same. You knew that your run game struggled. You didn't go get Derrick Henry during the season. You waited. Now you go get a great, a great backfield from 2017, 2018. Go make those changes. That's why it's his fault because you have to improve in areas as a general manager he did not. I completely agree. To say you're right there with the Kansas City Chiefs is delusional. I, I, yeah. I was, no, no, no. Thank you. No, I, he's talking about they have won in the same, the same span. No, we, they I have get, won the I, same amount of games. I understand what he's talking about, but to Jeff's point, mm-hmm. there is no a comparison. level of excellence on the Kansas City Chiefs roster and in their coaching staff That's that right. get them over that hump yeah. in the playoffs. I respect the level of delusion. When I see people talking <laughs> about Idris Elba, I'm like, I'm right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I have that mindset. But the reality is the reality. And once you get to the playoffs, oh, if you Lord don't have God. the players on your roster or your team to compete Thank with you. the elite level teams, because it, it is a larger gap between – Good to great than there is between good teams and terrible teams. Absolutely. That yeah, Idris Elba thing. Come on, that's don't be hating. You right there, Hawk. Hawk, you right I'm there right on there. the doorstep. You I'm not, not letting him talk me out there. Don't let him hate on you. You right there. I mean, if you look win the win in a regular season. <laughs> you and Idris. Yeah, I got like a lot of back back. Back. And when you and Idris in the playoffs, it's a different story. And I haven't reached my peak yet. That's <laughs> So, so what we're saying here is that you are to Idris Elba as the Cowboys are to Kansas City. Basically, that's what I, I, that's I think that's a reasonable way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what Thank I would you. say, Kmart. You. you grade this comment. Mm-hmm. I believe that Jerry Jones, the owner, has let down Jerry Jones, the general manager. Jerry Jones, the general manager, has done a very good job. They've drafted well. They've developed well. You know what they haven't done? They haven't filled in the holes that need to be filled in. And that's what the owner does. The owner authorizes Mm. that spending. The owner doesn't treat the free agency like it starts in September. Mm -hmm. The owner doesn't sign a player to the richest contract in NFL history an hour before the season begins so that he couldn't afford to sign anyone when free agency was actually going on. They didn't add the little bits and pieces because the owner, for whatever reason, has not been willing to spend the money necessary. Their cash out, their spending has been the lowest in the NFL over that period of time. Jerry, as an owner, has let down Jerry as a general manager. Because when you have a general manager in place, Hard that is a second set of, of eyes, a second person who, besides the head coach, that is going to sit with the owner and say, listen, hey, we need this, we need that, we need to fill these holes. Jerry is literally that person's like, eh, we're good. Um, and, and to Jeff's point earlier, the same things that are plaguing them now is what plagued them last year. It's why a lot of us were confused when Derrick Henry was on the Titans, and at the trade deadline, oh. Dallas did not make the call right. to, to inquire, hey, can we get Derrick Henry because we can use some oomph here, and Derrick Henry's out of our price range. Like, we can't afford that, brother. It's Ridiculous. like, well, last year, we or earlier this offseason, you could have, especially when Derrick Henry was sitting there in Texas training, thinking, why there. is my phone not ringing? Also, why is Hawk towering? Oh, what is happening? Well, that's, oh, that's a low chair. Yeah. He's a very tall man. But Thank that's you. a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah, no. there, there are issues, I think, with Jerry Jones, obviously. But the big thing that jumps out to me when he compares himself to the Chiefs is the Chiefs have found different ways to win. Yeah. They've Thank evolved. You with the game yeah. and with their roster. The Cowboys are still approaching this game the same way they always have, and it's not working out for them. Can I say something? Yeah. The difference between the Cowboys and the Chiefs is two people. It's Patrick Mahomes and it's Andy Reid. Yeah. And th- that is, that, that's Who's in charge of hiring the head coach, You're shorting the Chiefs. 
Veach, their general manager, right. the year they lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and their offensive line got worked, what did right. they go do? Bought an offensive line. I'm with you. Got it straight. There, that, th- there is a difference in the entire organization because the way it is run from general manager down to quarterback with the head coach. Last I year, agree with Last that. year was the defensive Super Bowl. Right. I, don't, I mean, I know we're going to chalk it up to Patrick Mahomes, but the reason why they ran through that playoffs and they had a chance to win the Super Bowl was because they drafted well and developed well with Spagnola in that defense. Absolutely. That's my point. That's how you evolve. That's how you stay competitive. That's how you win in the playoffs. And, and of course, as- Patrick Mahomes matters, but that wasn't the difference to me last and year. And as an organization, that's how you end up with the Patrick Mahomes in the first place right, and having true. Alex Smith on your roster, right? Like, it's a lot harder to spend your own money than it is for a general manager to do it. There's a level of objectivity that is just not there when you are the owner and the general manager. The reality is there is four moves that could have been made that would have the Cowboys season in a different place. Derrick Henry is one. Going to get a, 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 a beefy interior lineman who yep. can stop the run is number two. And signing CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott yeah. well before training camp yeah. so that it doesn't throw off your offensive chemistry for, for the first once, three it's games hard of the to, season. To, to argue with anything that's on there. The beefy interior. Like, we were talking about this last year. Yeah. That's the problem with the Cowboys. It's Jerry, we're not the smartest people in the room, but there are things that are glaringly obvious with this team that were not addressed, and it's the same stuff. And it's not just that. It's every level of an interior part of their defense. It's, it's line, linebacker, mm-hmm. and just carry it all the way through, which, by the way, is the spine of yeah. every defense. So if you don't understand that as a general manager, go hire one that does and goes and fixes that problem. All that is fair. And just so I can clarify what I meant by what I said, the Cowboys have won in the regular season at about the same rate yes. that, right. that the Chiefs have. What separates teams in the playoffs? The greatest quarterback of all time and an all-time great coach. Yeah. That, yeah. to me, is what makes a big difference when it gets to general. I 100% agree. Right. Let me say this, too. The, as good as as much as we talk about the Cowboys, make no mistake. When teams go play the Chiefs, there's a different level of intensity. You go play that that team than you go play the Cowboys. I get yeah. everybody loves it. When you go play those Kansas City Chiefs, bro, you are gamed up. You are ready because you know everybody in the league is watching you yeah. play the best. And that's there's the a different level Cowboys. of intensity. I like the Cowboys. I ain't hyped up to go play the Cowboys. I'm freaking fired up to go beat a Mahomes-led team. There's a difference in that every week as well. You know, and, that's and the uh, idea. I'll disagree with that one. That the bar is 12 win regular seasons. That's the difference between the two organizations. Right. Because the Chiefs would never tout Great that they've point. won 12 Great games. Point. They're going for Super Bowls, That's and they right. play like it at the beginning of the season, mm-hmm. late in the season, and especially when they get Hard to disagree enough. with that. As Jerry said, they've been hanging around the rim, and sometimes teams hang around. Yeah, well, it looks like we need to be flushed. All right, good people. That's where we are. Tomorrow is... A huge, huge day in Cowboy Land. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys as always. Peace out.